Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video, we looked at how using a old block number with block hash will always produce the result of zero. Now let's see a more comprehensive example where this can be detrimental. In Remix, I have a vulnerable smart contract game. And it's using the same principles as our simple example, but to illustrate how this would work more in a real life scenario. Within the course material, I asked you to review the code and figure out how you would exploit this particular contract in order to win every single time. Let's see how you did. The way this game is set up is that we have a play game function and we have a check winner function. Now when we want to play the game, it's going to require that we send in one ether to play the game. So there are stakes, we can lose money if we fail. Then within there, we're going to get the block number exactly like we did in our simple contract where we get the block number and we associate that with our address for the future. Later on, if we want to check if we actually won, we can call check winner. So the check winner function uses a very simple algorithm and it checks if something is equal to zero. So what it checks is, is the block hash of the block number, which we know is going to be zero after 256 blocks, percent two equals zero. And if it does equal zero, win will be true and will transfer a balance to the person who's playing the game. Otherwise, win will equal false and will end. So what is this block hash block number percent two going to equal? So let's open up a terminal and we'll type Python. And what we'll do is we'll say we ran 256 blocks, so we're going to get back a value of zero. So zero percent two, and that's always going to equal zero, which means we're going to win. So we can cheat this game simply by waiting 256 blocks based on the way that the game functions. The business logic of the game says you'll play the game, and when you want to check if you're the winner, you just run the check winner function. So we can just wait until the blocks are advantageous to us and run the function. So we're gonna do this similar to last time where we have ganache running. We're gonna use our waste time to simulate blocks happening. And then we're gonna check how this works. You also note that in order to play the game, we need one ether. In order to deploy it, we need 10 ether. So we need to keep that in mind. So let's exit out of here and we'll start up ganache. And now let's deploy it. So first we'll hit compile. Then we'll head down to deploy and run transactions, switch to web three provider. So we're using our ganache and we'll hit okay. Then we'll deploy it, but we need to use 10 ether to deploy because that's what's in our constructor value right here. We're going to check that message dot value is greater than or equal to 10 ether. So we'll hit deploy. And once that's deployed, we're going to play the game. We're going to wait 256 blocks by running the waste time function. And then we're going to check if we're the winner. And if we win, we should get a balance of two ether sent to us. We currently have 89.9. So let's play the game. And in order to play the game, we need to send one ether in per the requirements right here where it says one ether. So we'll play the game. And now what we're going to do is enumerate the blocks from two to 258. So now that we have more than 258 blocks and we started with two, which is more than 256, we can check if we're the winner. Now note that we have 88.8 .8 after all the transaction fees and we should increase by two. So let's check the winner. You'll notice that our value went up to 90. And if we check win, it says true that we won. And this will happen every single time because as we showed you with the math in Python, 0% 2 equals 0. So we'll always win and we can bypass this game via the business logic and the bad randomness within the algorithm. So I hope that example was useful to you. It was interesting to me as I often don't see bad randomness issues actually used in attacks. So this is actually pretty cool. 
If you learned something today, hit the like button. If you enjoyed the video, share it out to your friends and hit the subscribe button. And this is the last video within the free course. So if you'd like to learn more or you're interested in a CTF challenge, we hope to see you there.